Before you start, take a quick look at what you need to run the software. Keep in mind that EFI software works with PCs only, no Apple products. By the way, this info is also on page 4 in the user manual. The diagnostic software kit includes everything you need. Software CD with serial number, driver software information, diagnostic interface cable, USB to serial adapter, and instructions. Start with the Read Me First pages. They have important information that's not in the user manual. First register and install the software. The first time you run the software, it will prompt you to enter the serial number. You'll find it on the sticker of the CD sleeve. After you enter the serial number, the number turns green and you're good to go. This information is also on page 8 of the user manual. Registering your EFI diagnostic software is a must. For the first 30 days, you'll have full access to the software. But every time you use it, a message appears telling you how many days you have left. Remember, if you don't register, it only works for 30 days. When software updates are made, you can find them at diagsys.com. Select Kohler from the left-hand navigation, then choose Downloads. Okay, let's launch and communicate with the software. Use the serial cable and or the USB adapter to connect your computer with the engine. Click the EFI software icon on your desktop. It brings up the EFI diagnostic desktop. Then the vehicle selection menu appears. Check the engine identification decal for the model number you're working on. Select the vehicle you're working with and be sure the engine key is on. Here I'm choosing the ECH ECV 630 to 749 engine. Remember, the key must be turned on to communicate. After we select the engine, the main screen is displayed. Check the status bar on the lower left to confirm the connection. Remember, you have to choose an engine type and the ignition key must be on to create a communication link. When the link is established, it says status connected. In part two, we'll look at trouble codes. Let's take a look at diagnostic trouble codes. Each button on the control panel has a special diagnostic or information capability. Let's look at the trouble code button. I call it the money button because it saves you a lot of time. You can check the user manual for trouble codes, but the button is much quicker. Remember, the key must be on and status must show as connected. So, what are trouble codes exactly? Trouble codes are potential fault codes recorded in the software's memory. This happens when any sensor operates outside its pre-established limits. The codes used on models ECV, ECH, and newer are adapted from SAE standard automotive P codes. Most EFI units are equipped with an MIL or malfunction indicator light. If a sensor functions outside of its operating parameter while the engine is running, the light goes on. If the light goes out after a few moments, it means that it recorded an event and now is historic. If the MIL goes on and stays on, the trouble code is identified as current. Both types of codes are stored in the engine's computer memory. Select the trouble code button to display any stored codes. We're looking at code P0230. That's the fuel pump circuit. The code status is current. Click the red question mark in the info column to define this code. Now we see a description of the code. To start the code diagnostics, click the green diagnostic button. This brings up a screen showing the diagnostic procedure. Follow the instructions, click done, and the next instruction will be displayed. The instructions are specific to each trouble code. In this example, my meter shows no voltage, so I select almost zero volts. Clicking this button brings up a screen that shows the test conclusion and proper repair. Click the red X to exit. You'll use the red X whenever you want to exit any screen. If you're not sure where to connect the meter, you can see a picture of the repair area by selecting the eyeball icon 
next to the connection detail. When I click the eyeball next to the fuel pump connector, you can see the wiring for that area. If there's no image available for the detail, the eyeball will be gray and inactive. Here's another example. Watch what happens when I select the eyeball icon for the ground. After testing is complete, you see the suggested repair. After the repairs are complete, you can remove the stored trouble codes by clicking the Erase button. Depending on the code, different procedures will come up, but the steps will be similar. Next, we'll talk about the Data Display Screen function. Let's take a look at the Data Display Screen. This button launches the Data Display. Here's what the main display looks like. You'll see 14 lines of data. You can modify the screen depending on what you're diagnosing. Remember, the key must be in the on position. Click the gold file button. It brings up six preset display grids. I'll select number five, historic data values. The data screen changes automatically. Historic data is extremely helpful in understanding how the equipment has been used. You can modify the screen by selecting the line you want to remove and clicking the minus button. The highlighted line will disappear. Use the plus button to select a new line of data. A selection window appears with four pages of options. Use the arrows on the bottom right to navigate through the pages. Here I'm going to add engine hours total to my display. You can see it now on the bottom of the screen. The data values update live while the key is on and the status is connected. There are two ways to display data. Here's the meter view showing the throttle position sensor in a digital display. Here's the chart view showing the throttle position in a chart format. Just use the button to toggle back and forth to see the data in digital or analog format. The next function is the sensor data display screen. The sensor data screen shows values from four engine control sensors, engine temperature, intake air temp, battery voltage, and O2 volts. This function is great because you can easily see it from a distance. Your sensor display will differ depending on the engine model you select on the vehicle selection screen. Just like the data display screen, you can click the gold file button to see different preset options. You can easily change the data item in the meter. Just click on any title bar and select a different item from the menu. After you change it, click the save icon. You can change all four if you like. This lets you create a set of your most used data items to retrieve later. Click Save and name the file. In part four, we'll take a look at other software features. Let's look at some other useful features of the EFI diagnostic software. The fourth control panel function is the data trigger screen. This data item shows the trigger setup for the throttle position sensor. You can use the data trigger function to capture events that are specific to a data item or trouble code. Check the user manual or help file for detailed instructions. The next function on the main control panel is the Special Test button. The Special Test menu displays the available tests or procedures. Here we see options for our example engine, the ECH ECV 630 to 749. The first option, Diagnostic Procedures, gives you an easy way to look up trouble code information or run the guided diagnostic procedures. This screen lets you select either the circuit check or a specific trouble code from the list. Select a code and click the green arrow or double click on the code. The other options, the feature configuration registration, 
shows the software license ID number. Now, we'll look at the customer vehicle information screen. This screen lets you enter information about the vehicle and owner and print it for your customer files. To capture the information, print the screen, otherwise the information will disappear. The next function is the system configuration screen. The configuration screen is used to set the units of measure, workshop information, and communication port or COM port settings. Find more information on this in the user manual or help menu. Here's the print button to use when printing reports. This is the service manual icon. The service manual is a browser that gives you access to the appropriate Kohler factory service manuals. This is the units selection button. Use it to select your units of measure for engine temp and pressure. This is the system help button. It contains the most complete and updated information on the EFI diagnostic software. You can search by topic or use the search bar. System help is automatically updated whenever there are software updates. The engine vehicle selection button opens the list of engines you can diagnose with this software. Remember, choose the proper engine to be sure the proper diagnostic information is displayed. The last button is the exit button. It closes the diagnostic system and shuts down communication to the vehicle. That wraps up our overview on getting to know the EFI diagnostic software. Check your user manual for more in-depth instructions.